Hello, we are Memphis Community University. Today we are going to be practicing an AP calculation for response question. And today we have quite a challenge on our hands because we are going to be doing the difficulty 10 video out of 10, of course, of the polar free response question. So if you don't know our channel, what we do is we go from difficulty one through 10 in every single free response question, the AB ones like um, graph free response questions, table free response questions, accumulation free response questions, area and volume, difficulty, things like that. But we also do that for BC stuff like parametric, uh, Taylor series and polar. Taylor series, of course, is notoriously the hardest ones. Uh, parametric is very easy, but I think polar is really underrated in terms of its difficulty. Oftentimes, it is actually the hardest one and not Taylor series. So, for example, this last free response question, difficulty number 10, is based off a very recent free response question that appeared on the AP exam that was uh, by far the lowest score on that exam. Not the Taylor series, it was this one right here. Um, my students really did poorly on this one, so maybe I didn't prepare them well enough, but uh, what this question really involves is a knowledge of polar outside of um, calculus, really just understanding how polar works, so you'll see that as we do these questions. Uh, there are some easier versions, uh, not every single question is going to be hard in this one, so let's just get started. Looks like we have a calculator here, which is great, uh, so we can type things in our calculator. And we have, of course, our standard first question on polar free response questions, area. So remember that area, uh, you definitely want to get at least two things right in the area formula. You always want the one half, and you always want the r squared. In this case, the r is given to us, so it's not too bad. We also uh, can do this calculator, uh, sorry, this integral in a calculator, so that won't be bad as well. Let's just be careful when we write it. So the only question, of course, uh, when you're doing these area is what to put on the integral. So sometimes it's the given points, in this case it will be as well. But what you want to do is uh, sort of get familiar with how to do polar. So if you've watched our series, you know that polar angles work where you take an angle and then you go a certain radius. So any single angle or any single part of por uh, portion of the curve that's not the origin, it's pretty obvious to tell what the angle is. So for example, if you take this point right here, well, this angle is going to be pi over 2, and it's going to be going uh, 2. So, for example, this angle right here, same thing, same thing, same thing. Unfortunately, what this uh, push, uh, this polar curve is bounded by are two angles where you don't really uh, know what they are because you can't really see them on the graph because the radius is zero. So they could literally be any single angle because you just take any angle, but you don't go anywhere. You're just going to stick at the origin. So what you want to do, or at least eyeball, is look at the function and see where it is equal to zero. Where is r equal to zero? Well, it's actually going to be the endpoint, so that's why this one is not too tricky. So, for, But let's just make sure. When you plug in zero, you will get zero sine of zero. And then if you're thinking about the unit circle, which angle has the next sine, which is zero? Well, it's going to be on the x-axis still, and it's going to be pi. So what angle do are we going to plug in in this case to get pi? So we get sine of pi, which is zero. Well, theta will be square root of pi, which again is the other endpoint. Uh, square root of pi squared is pi, sine of pi is zero. That's why you're going to have zero. So that's why these angles look like that. But again, we've seen questions in these uh, in this video series. If you've been watching them, I applaud you because we definitely uh, appreciate your support of our channel. But you've seen angles where uh, you might have to do some sort of trig knowledge and set equal uh, whatever r is to be equal to zero so that you can actually find some angles that you can put on this integral. Uh, just keep in mind that sometimes it's not the endpoints. In this case, it is the given endpoints. Theoretically, this question could be pretty hard. So, for example, if I wrote 0 to be square root of 2 pi, it would be the same sort of thing, but the graph would be uh, looping twice, so that's going to be the exact area of this graph. So, again, you want to be careful with those angles. In this case, it wasn't too bad. Now, what we have to do, of course, is type this in a calculator, which also isn't bad. Uh, just keep in mind that you should be in radians, of course. So this is my guy right here. So it's going to be math um, integral. So that's not too bad. 0 to square root of pi. So where's square root? Square root is right here. And then just remember when you're typing in this function, just remember to square the r. So it's going to be, let's put some parentheses around here. So 4 sine of x squared. You can choose any variable of integration, of course. I always accidentally put too many parentheses for that part, so let's do that. So this is just my four sine. I'm gonna put a parentheses and then I'm gonna square it because again, it's one half r squared. Then we're gonna put x. And then we're gonna keep in mind that this is actually not gonna be the answer. And why is this not the answer? Well, we do have to divide it by one half. So this is gonna be the final answer when we divide by two. 
uh, so it's going to be 5.359. I don't know if I said divide by one half, but I meant multiply by one half, divide by two. So again, not too bad of an area question. If you were sort of to guess, you would have guessed right that the endpoints were this. But it is nice to recognize that the trouble angles on any polar curve is when the polar curve is at the origin. And how to determine those points is you set R to be zero. Now we have another question that is not too bad. Uh, first, we're gonna be dealing with the distance from the polar curve to the origin. Keep in mind, that's just the radius. So that's not uh, too bad. So R is equal to the distance because that's how polar curves work. You start at the origin, you go an angle, and then you go that distance, the R. So R is the distance from the polar curve. That's not too bad in this question. I've said too bad for a, quite, a, uh, quite often in the last few sentences, but sometimes I repeat my sentences uh, when I'm trying to fill silence. But in this case, again, R is equal to the distance from the polar curve to this, uh, sorry, I wrote the word sentences because I can't think, uh, to the origin. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna find the average. Well, this is gonna be the average formula. Let me remind you what the average formula is. It's different than average rate. So let's think about what average is versus average rate. That's what my students often get confused with. Uh, so this is average rate here. So average is 1 over b minus a, the integral of that thing, the average value of f. So this is uh, 1 over b minus a. We're going to be using this formula because we're finding average and not average rate of the distance. But keep in mind that average rate of the distance is often asked. So that formula is going to be, uh, well, you can do the same formula, but put f prime instead. Because the average rate of change is the same thing as the average of f prime because f prime is the rate, but usually you'll be using the fundamental theorem of calculus and you'll be using this formula instead. So this is what I call algebra slope because it is algebra slope. So average rate is algebra slope, calculus slope is derivative. But in this case, we're gonna just do this formula. Again, it's not too bad. All we're gonna do is one over uh, sort of a weird interval, but still nothing tricky. And it's gonna be zero to square root of pi. And then uh, no r squared this time, just r. Whatever you're taking the average of, you put it in that, um, you put that in the integral as the integrand. So in this case, it's going to be, um, well, the polar curve is 4 sine theta squared. So we're going to put this formula in here. And then we're going to type this guy in now. So again, let's do that. We are going to, perhaps we can just use our first one. Uh, but we just have to delete the squared. So let's see if this works. Perhaps not. So we're going to delete the squared. Uh, delete this thing right here. Just hit enter. So this is going to be just the integral. And then keep in mind, we do have to divide by the square root of pi uh, because that's the average formula. So the square root of pi. And then we're going to enter. And it looks like we're going to get 2.0194 or 2.019 because usually, or not usually, but most times with a calculator, you round to three places after the decimal. So again, these two questions haven't been too bad. This is difficulty number 10. The harder stuff will, of course, appear in the later questions, and they will take not a long time, but just uh, sort of some thinking, as you will see. First question was an area question, always using integral of 1 half r squared, trying to determine the endpoints. The endpoints in this case are where it's at the origin, which is difficult, but it, it was the uh, givens where r is equal to 0. Then we did distance. Uh, distance is the, um, R is, sorry, R is the distance from the, uh, between the polar curve and the origin. That's what R represents in polar. We reviewed average and average value. So average value is this. Average rate is this. There's two formulas. Theoretically, if we were going to find average rate of the, of the distance from the polar curve to the origin, we would be doing this formula. So we would do R of square root of pi minus R of 0 over uh, square root of pi minus 0. If you want to think about that, that's going to actually be 0. So the average rate of change of this formula is ironically, or not ironically, but coincidentally 0. But in this case, we weren't finding average rate. We were actually finding average, not average rate. So average value or average is going to be 1 over v minus a times the integral, 1 over v minus a times the integral. No squaring, just put the r there and then type it in the calculator. So now we have a pretty difficult question. We are actually asked the rare equal area question. Uh, usually the equal area question is an AB level question on area and volume uh, free response question. So let me remind you what that is. 
So how it works is um, you have this function, top minus bottom. Again, we have area and volume questions. Uh, we do the same thing where we go from difficulty one through 10, where we sprinkle A, B, and B, C questions in there. But in this case, what it is is you have these two functions and they say something along this line where they say um, a vertical line, X is equal to K. So that it's a little bit worded differently, but it splits this region up. So this is not the great picture, but let's say this is A to B. And we'll say like the vertical line x is equal to k. So it's not going to be midway because uh, these two functions aren't going to have uh, make areas that are symmetrical. And it will say write but do not evaluate an integral or an equation involving integrals that get, uh, solves uh, this line k where you have this area being this area. So let me just remind you how that one works. Basically, you're just setting two area formulas to be the same. Not in the context of polar, but in the context of regular area, which is just the integral of top minus bottom, the integral of the vertical distance uh, between the two curves. So it's just the integral of f minus g equals the integral of f minus g, whatever f and g are. So this is, and what we want to do is we want to set the first half to be equal to the second half. So just like in the first page, uh, always the numbers are, what's more important, these stay the same because for both of these regions, the top area is this, or the top function is this, so it's f minus g, that's the vertical distance, and then f minus g uh, as the function are changing. So in this case, where, where are we gonna put our endpoints? Well, it's gonna be a to k, and then k to um, b. So this is the equal area question when you're doing just normal um, area and volume questions. A lot of my students are intimidated by it at first, but they sort of memorize it. They sort of see an example and they're like, oh, it's this the same uh, in the same exact way. Another thing you could do is you could set this area to be half the entire area. So that'd be the integral of A to K of F of minus G equals one half the area from A to B of F minus G. Basically this equation is just the first half equals the second half. The second equation that I just mentioned would be the first half equals half the entire thing. And then you could also even do the latter half the, the right half is equal to half the entire thing. But what we're gonna do in this question is we're gonna be doing something pretty similar. So this shape kind of looks phallic, but hopefully you'll um, pardon me for that. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this angle instead. It's gonna be uh, theta is equal to k. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go from uh, zero to k and k to pi over two, square to pi over two with this formula. So again, it'll be the first half area. That's zero to this angle, k. Remember that any angle that's not at the origin is pretty obvious. So this uh, point is evidently at theta equals k. Then we're going to go from k to the origin, but the origin we figured out was at square root of pi. So this formula is going to be pretty similar. So this is the area and volume one. So it's going to be one half. You technically don't need the one half because both sides will have one half on it. But we're going to go from zero to this number k. We're going to go to k to square root of pi. And then what's the formula for area and polar? What's well, r squared? So it's going to be this right here. So it's going to be uh, 4 minus sine, uh, I don't even remember what the formula is, theta squared. Theta squared. So keep in mind that this is just r, so it's r squared, so it's 1 half r squared. So that's why there's two squareds. Uh, it just so happens to be that one of them has squared. It's not minus, it's time, sorry. So we'll just change that to a dot. But there's two squares here. One is because the formula happens to have a squared, and then one is because there's an outside squared. And now we're going to do the same thing. Just like in the area and volume question, the integrand or the thing that goes in the integral doesn't change, f minus g, f minus g. In this case, it will still be one half r squared. So again, a uh, pretty difficult question, uh, but what is changing actually? It's the angle. So again, what this means is you find the area from zero to k. I don't know what the k is. Then you'll set it equal to k to the entire thing. Again, I remember I uh, remember that I alluded to the fact that there's multiple ways to do this. So you could have had this guy right here, the integral from zero to k of one half of r squared equal to one half this entire area that we found earlier. So that would mean that this first area is half the entire area. That would be a valid solution. In this case right here, what we have is we have the first area equals the second area. So the first area being from here to here because you're going from zero to k. And then the second area being k to this number, k to square root of pi. That's the second area because you're going from this angle to this angle. Unfortunately, though, uh, they don't want us to write the answer with k as is normal. Uh, we've had this question actually pretty exactly. 
where we just were able to stop because they said write an, uh, an equation that involves theta equals k, the ray theta equals k. But in this case, we do have to think a little bit about trig. So what it's saying is there's a line with positive slope a. So this is just the constant a that divides s into the two regions. So it is true that this theta equals k is going to be referring to uh, this theta right here is going to be uh, part of the integral. But unfortunately, theta is not given. What's given actually is the slope. So how do you find the slope? Well, this is where I was talking about at the very beginning of the video. Some of these questions are so hard because you have to sort of understand how trig works or how polar works. So what does the slope a tell me about theta? Well, if you think about it, a is going to be y over x. It's the rise over the run. Uh, that's what slope is from algebra one. So then we have y and over x. So then uh, what's going to be this formula? Well, theta is going to be the, um, the tan of theta using Sogatella is going to be y over x. So the tan of theta is equal to y over x. But y over x is a because y over x is the area. So in this case, what is, um, so that's going to be a. So then what's the relationship between a and theta? We call it k because that's how they normally have it. But in this case, what is theta? It's going to be the inverse tan of a. So that's why this question is really hard. We're going to replace these k's with actually an angle. Uh, the relationship, it is an angle, but how does it deal with k? It's going to be the inverse of a. So I'm probably not explaining this very well, so I'm going to restart, uh, go over it again after I write this. Um, hopefully as we review it, it'll make a little bit more sense. But again, this is really difficult stuff. Um, I'm assuming that not many people on the, in the country got this part right here, especially this inverse of a part. Uh, but this is going to be pi. So this is going to be the answer. Again, let's recap this because this is quite difficult. I think this is probably more difficult than the next part. But keep in mind that we're doing the equal area question. Normally the equal area question appears in area and volume. So it's just the integral of the top function minus the bottom function twice. You start off with the left endpoint, go to a, a mysterious number k, then you equal it, go from that middle number to, all the way to b, the right endpoint. This case is the same thing, but you're just doing polar areas instead, so the area formula is different. It's not top minus bottom, it's one half r squared. So you go from your first number, your first angle, to your k value, so that's uh, whatever that angle is, k. Then you'll uh, start at k and then go all the way to the end, which is square root of pi. In both cases, it will be one half r squared. But the question is, they didn't give me anything about the angle. They didn't say, let theta be k, and then you're done. What we need to do is we need to use the fact that this line has positive slope a to help me find what this uh, theta being equal to k is. So what we need to do is we need to find theta in terms of a. Well, what we know is a is slope, and a is going to be y over x. But uh, y over x is another thing. y over x is also the tangent because it's Sokotoa. Uh, opposite over adjacent. So y over x is a. That means that tan of theta is equal to a. So that gave us an equation that related theta and a. We took the inverse of each side and we got theta is equal to inverse of tan. Sorry, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of a. And that's why we were able to replace that. And that's how the question ended. So again, a pretty difficult question. It did use areas. Uh, we're going to be doing areas as well in this question as well, this last question. But hopefully that made sense. Again, it's the same thing as our normal equal area question. Small to this middle number, middle number to the big number. Small to the middle number, middle number to the big number of the area formulas set equal to each other. But in this case, we did have to find a formula for that angle, uh, which required a little bit of trig uh, polar knowledge that the slope is the same thing as y over x. And y over x is, of course, tangent. So to find tangent, to find a, we took the inverse tangent of both sides. Now let's do this last question. So this last question is pretty similar. Uh, so what it's asking is, for k greater than zero, let a of k be the portion of the region r that is also included in this circle right here, r is equal to x cosine theta. Then it wants us to find this limit. So this question looks very intimidating, but it's actually a little bit easier to understand in my opinion than this question right here. The first thing you wanna know is what r is equal to cosine theta is. So keep in mind that r is equal to cosine theta is a circle that looks like this. So let's, for example, review r is equal to 2 cosine theta. So if you plug in, for example, 0, 
this is this angle. Remember that any angle that's not on the origin is very easy to tell. So when you plug in zero, you'll get cosine of zero and cosine of zero is one. So you're just gonna get two. So that's why this angle is right here. Uh, so this is radius two. So if you have this, not radius two, diameter two, R is the radius. It's, it's sort of weird to talk about radius and diameter here. But uh, again, this graph, what it looks like is it's just a circle with diameter this length. Um, and then for example, R is equal to five cosine theta, you would extend it all the way out to R equals five. But keep in mind that what this circle looks like and why this circle is nice to know is that this is always beyond the x-axis. There's no y values that are negative. Not, sorry, not y values. There are no x values that are negative. Same thing for uh, a number being r being 2 sine of theta. That would look like this where it's a circle where it would be um, separated in half by the y-axis instead and it would never go below the x-axis. So in this case, this one right here is separated by the x-axis, uh, never goes beyond the y-axis. So it's nice to know that. But keep in mind that that's true for every single number here, uh, positive k. So as our k is getting bigger, it's going to infinity. Notice that this circle will slowly, slowly expand, but it still will not go past the y-axis. So the question is, what's going to be inside the circle? Well, again, you're going to draw a circle. Uh, sorry. Or my region is so hard to see now, but it's this region right here. So when you draw this circle, it's going to go like this. Uh, so give me one second. It's going to be like this, maybe. So it's going to be some ginormous circle. So keep in mind that the area that's going to be inside this circle Eventually, it's going to be steep enough. So it, again, it never crosses the x-axis. So the area is just going to be from here to here. What it's not going to include is the part beyond the y-axis, which is this part right here. So to find the area, if you think about it, it's just going to be the area of this polar region and the first quadrant. And if you just think about it like that, then it's pretty easy. So let's just write the answer out. Not really explaining things well because everything is so theoretical. But hopefully that made sense. Again, when you extend this area, the circle, the circle is going to be so wide and encompassing that all of it will eventually be in the polar curve except the part past the y-axis uh, because again these circles are centered around k over 2 uh, comma 0 and so you're just going to extend the circle forever so it's going to be super super steep going to extend the circle forever it's going to be very very flat uh, towards the y-axis but it'll never cross the y-axis so when we're finding the area of the region R as the circle is expanding, we're including everything that's past the y-axis and not we're not including anything beyond uh, to the left of the y-axis. So the area of this R is just going to be, not the area of R because R is the entire area, but it's the area formula as the circle is getting bigger and bigger, it's going to be whatever R is in this first quadrant, not including the thing uh, to the left of the y-axis. So hopefully that made sense. Again, uh, I feel like my explanations there weren't wasn't in incredible, but again, it's really, really theoretical. So here we're going to have 0 to pi over 2, and then we're, all we're going to do is we're going to type in this formula uh, where r squared is this like normal. So it's going to be 4 times sine uh, theta squared times d theta. Uh, why is this squared here? Because it's r squared still. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this formula. We already did a very similar integral uh, when we did the front because we were defining the area. What's going to change? Not r itself because, of course, we're still using the same polar curve. But what's going to change is going to be this top number here. So it's going to be squared of pi uh, changes to pi over 2. Just like in that one, we do need to account for the 1 half, so we're going to divide by 2. So the answer is 5.129. So... Um, Looks like if you subtract off that 5.129 answer that we just got, you'll get this area right here, this small little area, which would be the integral from 1 half uh, squared of, uh, pi over 2 to square root of pi of r squared. So let me try to go over to this entire free response question, and at the end, I will try to cover this uh, last part again. So the first part was just area. Area is not too bad, especially because uh, the endpoints happen to be the givens, but if you wanted to check that, you would set r to be equal to 0 and find the first few zeros. In this case, it's 0 and square root of pi. Because when you plug in square root of pi, you'll get square root of pi squared, which is pi. Sine of pi is 0. Then we just type this in a calculator. It is 1 half integral of r squared. 
Then we had average distance. Average distance is different than average rate. So average different distance is just one minus uh, b minus a. In this case, uh, these angles squared to pi minus zero, the integral of distance. So in this case, we just put distance, distance being r, and then uh, r being the distance between the polar curve and the origin, and we just found this integral. Then we had an equal area question where it was nor like our normal er equal area questions where we had uh, the first half area is equal to the second half area. So that's why we had one half r squared for both slots. And then the first half went from zero to whatever our angle that was split it with. And then our second uh, integral will be starting at that angle, the split angle, always going to the, the furthest angle that's a possible, which is squared to pi. Then we had to write the angle according to this, uh, the slope of this line, which we called A, and we saw that it was inverse tan using uh, the fact that A is equal to Y over X and so is the tan of theta. Then we have this area question, which is pretty theoretical. What we noted is that for any polar curve of this portion, it's just a circle centered about uh, K over two comma zero. So as you're expanding, the circle is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and will slowly encompass basically everything past this y-axis. So what's not going to be in that uh, circle, it's going to be the portion right here. So what is going to be in that circle? Everything that was in the first quadrant, because there was nothing in the second or the, or not the second, but the third or the fourth. So if there were something in the fourth, we would include that area as well, because this circle is slowly expanding, if you can tell right here. It will slowly encompass all of this. It won't encompass this because these circles, uh, even if they get really, really big, do not encompass uh, anything past the y-axis on the left side. So in this case, we found this integral. Again, as the circle is expanding, the area and the portion, the portion of r that is also within the circle that's expanding is going to be in this first quadrant. So that's why we went from 0 to pi over 2. But as you can tell, we went 1 half r squared in most of these questions. That's what I would suggest is the most important thing. So again, this polar free response question was based off a question that was uh, quite recent, where it was a very difficult question. What I would like you to know, and what I tell my students to know, is no area is one half r squared. Try to find the angles as best as possible, perhaps setting r to be zero if it's at the origin. Then what was not asked at all, which is normally asked in these polar questions, is uh, something more important, which is x is equal to r cosine theta y is equal to r sine theta, and then taking all those derivatives that we've done so many times throughout this video series, dx d theta, dr d theta, dy d theta, those are just taking derivatives because all those uh, functions are in terms of theta, and then to find the harder derivatives, dr dt, dx dt, and dy dt, use the chain rule. For example, dx dt is equal to dx d theta times d theta dt. Then we might need to find dy dx because that's the slope of the tangent line. dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. We've talked about all these things quite often. It's kind of weird that this free response question did not include any of that. So that concludes our polar free response questions. Again, they're pretty hard. So this is actually usually if your teacher has a pretty standard curriculum, this will be the last sort of learning topic. Uh, perhaps parametric is... Uh, taught at the same time, so you can check out our parametric free response questions. But this is actually not our last video series. We have a video series called AB Multiple Choice Like and BC Multiple Choice Like that we highly encourage students to watch because you can't really predict every single AP free response question. So for example, you might know that there's a Taylor series or a parametric and polar, maybe a graph free response question, a table free response question. But oftentimes there's these miscellaneous questions that are really the combination of a bunch of multiple choice questions without the multiple choice. And that's what those two video series are. So we call them AB multiple choice light free response questions because they're free response questions that are multiple choice AB level questions. And same thing with our BC series. So we go from difficulty one through 10 in each of those series. So for example, if you're taking BC because you're, you're doing a polar question, you'll see a lot of integration by parts by hand. Uh, integration by partial fractions, also a lot of series stuff like um, uh, ratio tests and uh, limit comparison tests and integral tests and things like that. Um, and proper integrals are, are included as well. Euler's method, arc length that we talked about um, also in those. So please check those out. Those are probably our most important video series because if you watch those, you'll get a nice review of uh, the multiple choice section of the AP exam as well. But no matter what you choose to watch, thanks again for watching. This has been Polar. This has been a lovely journey going from difficulty 1 through 10 with you guys. Uh, it's been quite a challenge. We've seen a lot of questions. Uh, but we did focus on the fact that we knew area. We knew x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. And we knew all, how to find those derivatives. 
But again, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in another video.